Unsyndicated presents What the Puck with Sean Belegian. Hey, what is up? So glad you could join us. What the Puck on a Wednesday night. Uh, love chatting up with some of the guys that are going to be playing in this great event. You know, we talked so much about that first event uh, back in September at Big Boy Arena in Frazier. Bruins alumni and the Wings alumni. Uh, I, I think we're going to start a little series, which I think is really cool. The next one up, Rangers and Wings coming up April 27th. Uh, the best part about this is it's all for charity. I mean, not only does it give us a chance to see uh, so many great players of the past get out there, but uh, GH Pastor Foundation for Kids, uh, over $30,000 raised for CMN Epilepsy Foundation, Kentuckiana and the Judson Center. Kindly joining us right now, a couple of guys who wore the winged wheel amongst some of the teams that they played with in their days in the National Hockey League, and they are going to be part of a fantastic roster. Wings and Rangers, April 27th. Uh, let's welcome in Windsor's own uh, Aaron Ward and, and a guy that now called uh, Minnesota home. After being born out west, uh, grew up in Minnesota. He's got the greatest beard in the league. Look at that beard still. My gosh. Uh, let's welcome in Patrick Eves as well. Fellas, really appreciate you taking the time. Thanks for joining us on What the Puck. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Hey, Aaron, let's start with you. Um, you know, you were just talking off the, the air, so to speak, about how you guys are still going in a lot of these games. Uh, it, it's amazing to me when you talk to some of the guys. You know, I, I, I had a conversation with Chelly. I had a conversation with, with a lot of guys that you played with, and they caught wind of this, and they wanted to be a part of this. Uh, listen, you guys can leave the game but the game never leaves you. Is that the best way to put it? Yeah, I think that guys uh, understand as they distance themselves from their actual careers, they understand the value of staying connected. Uh, actually, Patty and I, I'll give you an example. I didn't play with Patty. Patty and I were traded for each other, but we didn't play together. But our paths crossed here in North Carolina, and uh, it was by way of an alumni skate. Is guys want to still stay connected? We gather once a week and guys that have never played with each other turn into being great friends. We all have the same things in common uh, based on our backgrounds, how we grew up, how we uh, went through our careers. So when opportunities like this present themselves, most times guys want to jump because they can they can reconnect with players they likely wouldn't see elsewhere. Like even though I'm a wing, I'm going to be playing in the Rangers um, team. And I had barely a cup of coffee when I was in New York. I think I was unceremoniously uh, escorted out of New York. They, 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 it was <laughs> one of their top five worst signings. Um, but uh, I'm going to get to play in front of Hank and maybe improve what I did for uh, or I didn't do for him for the five months I was there. As maybe I can actually block a shot and not screen him. <laughs> <laughs> now, guys, me and Sean had a chance to call uh, alumni versus the PGA pros game. And that was kind of fun and back and forth. When you get the alumni playing the alumni, Patrick, how intense can these games get? Uh, you know what? This this will be my really my first one. Um, huh? my, yeah, so we're playing another alumni team. We we had the outdoor game here in Carolina, and that was uh, my first time skating in, in any time of, uh, any type of alumni event. So I'm really looking forward to this, just to um, reconnect with old friends and and then you know meet guys that you played against that you never met. Uh, in person, kind of like uh, how Aaron and I reconnected. So um, I've heard they do get intense, especially down the stretch. I think everyone out there still has that competitive streak in them. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward just to go have a, a good time and, and uh, you know, meet new people and see old friends. Yeah, these, bees, these boys will be a part of it. April 27th, Big Boy Arena, New York Rangers alumni taking on the Detroit Red Wings alumni. The, the rosters are unbelievable. I know Aaron mentioned uh, King Henrik is going to be there. I mean, some really big names for both clubs. There's no doubt about it. I wanted to ask you guys this, um, especially a guy like you, Aaron. I I've been very fortunate. I, I worked in the OHL for many years. I worked for the USNTDP for a couple of years, called some games uh, in, in college. No two paths are the same. 
And I'm always intrigued to ask guys when they're coming up why they chose the path that they did. And, and Aaron, I'll start with you before we get to Patrick. Here you grew up in, in basically the shadow of, of legendary Windsor Arena, uh, probably watching the Spitfires, and you decided to go the U.S. college route, obviously had an illustrious career at, at Michigan. T talk about how you made that decision because it, most Windsor boys – you know, dream of going and playing in the Ontario Hockey League. What? How did well, your decision I, my work? My family is from Windsor, but I did end up moving to Ottawa, and mm -hmm. that's where my actual minor hockey took place. Yeah. But uh, my father, so my my grandfather was the principal at Assumption and Kennedy in uh, in Windsor, and my mom's side, uh, they were they all were part of the Heim Walker Distilleries. So I my roots are in Windsor. How I got to that is uh, I had a father that more or less made the decision for me. <laughs> that uh, he he was he's uh, he was a crown prosecuting attorney in in Canada. Um, he went to the University of Michigan himself. Uh, career uh, career student. So as I was growing up, it was kind of instilled in me early on that utilize hockey as an asset. And and if you're not necessarily going to make the National Hockey League, which the you know the percentage is pretty low. If you look at the number of hockey players versus the 770 odd guys nowadays that play every year, uh, there's another avenue, another purpose to utilizing hockey, and that's to, to go to college. And so that was kind of given to me at an early age. And then I kind of adopted that. That was something I wanted to do. Um, being Canadian, you usually got one game a year. I mean, sorry, one game a week that was televised in college football. Of course, I mean, I'm looking at that puke green hat you're wearing, but uh, usually it was <laughs> Michigan. It was Michigan. I grew up with uh, Carter as a, as a wide receiver. And and so it was, the imprint was there. Beyond my father going to school there, I wanted to go to Michigan. I went through the recruiting process, but that was it for me. And I was a kid who did decently well, moderately excelled in school. So I, it, it just made sense to me. Patrick, how about for you, uh, NTDP? I, I mean, back then it wasn't what we know it to be today. I think the secret's out now. We we all knew that there was something special going on and it turned into something. And same thing for you. You decided to go the college route. Easy decision for you? Yeah, that was it was very easy. My uh, you know, both my parents stressed education as a as a you know big part of our lives. And um, you know, we I used hockey to go get that. And so growing up, um you know, we, we kind of moved all over the place. My dad was a hockey coach. He was hired and fired. And um, so we ended up at Shattuck St. Mary's, which was a, a prep school in Minnesota there. And so education was always, you know, big on the docket. And hockey was uh, probably equal there. It was, you know, a hockey school and a, and a great education. So we just, uh, I, I just kind of followed that path on the way up. And then junior year went over to the NTDP um, in Ann Arbor there, went to Pioneer High School. And, um, yeah, it was just an easy process. My brother was at Boston College. Um, I knew I wanted to go play with him. And so I, I committed there. And uh, we had two great years of playing together on the same line. And then, uh, and then I played another year there right before turning pro. So um, it was just the way it was in our family. You played hockey and you went to college and got that education. Patty, you're allowed to take a shot at his hat, by the way. <laughs> no, <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to. I let to... you guys battle it out. <laughs> no, there's no battle. I mean, Boston College. I mean, you're higher education. They grow grass there. I mean, if you want your regard landscaped, Sean can help you. <laughs> yeah. it, it seems now a lot of the top guys coming out are going and choosing that college routes as you guys did. And a lot of them, Patrick, did something that you also did, which was play in the World Junior Tournament. And, and that was a special tournament mm. there in 2004, the first time the U.S. took home the gold medal. Could you give us some of your experiences and tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, it's, it, that was that was years. We were building that team up for the 2004. It was pretty much our same group that went through NTDP with us, and then we had we we called in some guys um, for every world uh, tournament. So under 17s, under 18s. I think we brought in Zach Breezy, James Zanuski, uh Danny Richmond. So we 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 kind of had our core group there, and then we bring in guys for these tournaments. So. Uh, we won the under under 17 as a group. We won under 18 as a group. So we were kind of just primed to, you know, hit that 2004. And, and fortunately, we got some good bounces at the end there. But it was uh, 
yeah, it was a crazy experience. It was in Helsinki, Finland. Um, I lived there when I was 11 years old for a year. My dad coached the HIFK team right there in Helsinki. So I got to see a lot of friends and, and go play in the rink that I was skating at, you know, shoot, eight or nine years before that. So um, for, all, for all of it to go perfectly in Helsinki with a ton of old friends there, it was, it was very special. And then we cracked the egg. And, and uh, now it, it seems like, you know, they, it's snowballing. So it, it, it's been great to see the teams that followed that are, are having great success there as well. Aaron Ward, Patrick Eves, uh, kindly joining us. Uh, don't forget, April 27th, Rangers alum taking on the Wings alum. You can be a part of that, see some great hockey. And uh, I'll tell you what, the best part about it to me, Mike, is it's all for a great cause. So make sure you get out there and and do that. And uh, a lot of people are chirping at my puke green hat right now. And I thank you very, very much for that, uh, Aaron, as well. Um, hey, guys, you guys, one thing you have in common is is playing down in, in Carolina. And I had the opportunity to go down there and, and do a game, a couple of games for Carolina. And it blew my mind, number one, what a great area the Raleigh area is. And, and number two, the passionate hockey fans down there. It, it really, it, it wasn't what people expect. What has your experience been like uh, when you guys were down in Carolina? I know you guys both spent a substantial amount of time down there. So I'll give you the secret here. There's two demographics of fans that exist down here in Raleigh. It's the original Southerners, and then there's the transplants. And there's a, there's a heavy population of Michiganders, a lot of Ohioans, tons of people from Pennsylvania. We have a healthy population of New Yorkers and uh, New Jerseyites. So with that, people have either maintained their hockey fandom and made Carolina their second team, or they've immediately adopted it. So the passion more or less comes from 02 when we ended up playing the Wings and the, and the, and the Cup Finals. There was almost like a, an undeserving reward for a team that, that didn't expect to get to the, to, to the finals, right? So you got a fan base that's like, Look at look what goes along with Stanley Cup. It's like tons of attention, TV cameras everywhere. I mean, it's the center of the of the of the universe of hockey right here. 06 happens, and then the victory component, it, it's like an infectious disease. It, it it hit their blood. So the organization's done a good job of maintaining um their type of fandom. And what I mean by that is fans can sit out in the parking lot and they can tailgate. And that's part of how you absorb the hockey game, right? Uh when it's when it's nice out in in late February into March, you'll start to see people coming out at two o'clock in the afternoon. They're cooking, they're eating, they're drinking, they're playing whatever game they've got going. They've got it going. Come playoff time, city shuts down. So the day of the game, everybody's more or less there by two o'clock. Half in the bag. I think it's economics are smart. They're not buying the fourteen dollar beers, but this is this is how they've adopted the team. And there's a, a, a full loyalty to the team. This this fan base. Will do anything for and and loves everything about this organization. I called one game there, Aaron. One game in in Carolina. One game uh, down in Tampa, filling in when Forslund was there. It was amazing how many Kaniacs followed me just just from covering a couple games because Mister Carmanis needed somebody. I I was very very taken aback at at the passion down there. It, it really was an, an amazing scenario, Mike. Yeah, and and. Being from not from Carolina, being from Detroit, I can't skip over and not ask Aaron about 1997, the Stanley Cup, mm -hmm. bringing it finally home to, to us fans. And it seems like everyone from Detroit has a story. Every player has a story about that. What are some of your favorite memories and story of that 97 Cup run? I think the story now that resonates with me is I, I wish I would appreciate it more, right? You, when you're 24 years old, you don't recognize the fact that this doesn't happen normally. I mean, I just was doing a radio show today about uh, Skinner, who plays for Buffalo, who's never even gone to the playoffs. Yeah. And for, for me to come in on my first year that I'm, I'm so, I've solidified myself on the team as, as, a, as a daily member, and oh, we win the Stanley Cup, and oh, we win the Stanley Cup again. This is, this is irregular. So uh, for me, the memories I take are – now at 51 years old, recognizing that I played with a certifiable Hall of Fame in that locker room. Like mm. to my left, it was like the, the two plugs. It was me and whoever else it was going to be. I think it was uh, Jamie Pusher. And then it went like it went Lidstrom, Konstantinov, Fatisov, 
uh, Murphy. And you go down the you go down the row and, and over and over and over nonstop, you're just thinking about, okay, well, that's just the D. And then you go to the forwards, <laughs> and here you got Eisenman, you got Shanahan, you got Larianoff, I mean, Fedorov. It, and the, the names continue. And then as you process that, what everybody talks about when you win a Stanley Cup is creating those memories, and they're everlasting. I made memories with guys that, like, I was way out over way out over my skis. I had no business being there. Those guys were fantastic in terms of skill sets, experience, and I did the best I could to absorb the the stories and, and the lessons they teach. But uh, I didn't do the best job. But that's my memories. I played with the most amazing hockey players, and they're all in one team in one city. Unbelievable. Uh, talk about your time here, Patrick. I, I think you're remembered for a lot of things. Uh, a mutual friend of mine said he'll never forget your drink of choice in the summer. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I think he said, what is it? Natty Light and ginger ale. I, I, I think he said, oh. you. is that what it is, Patrick? I want to make sure that that's what it is. Uh, I think you know well, who it's probably coming from, but what was your time here in Detroit like? Yeah, it was, it was, it's Bush Light and ginger ale, not Natty Light. You're really close. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, I, you know what, I came in there as kind of spare part. Um, and I, I got put on a line rotating with, uh, Chris Draper, Kirk Maltby and, and Darren Helm. And, and kind of like what Aaron said, you know, you're, you're looking around the locker room at these nameplates and you're like, holy smokes, this is, this is chess. They're playing chess. And I was playing checkers this whole time, you know, and I had no idea until you finally get to see behind the curtain. And so I, I, I just tried to, I, I kept my mouth shut and my ears and eyes open every day and just watched and learned how, how these guys went about their, their day. And so I came in and I just tried to figure out a role for myself. And I ended up penalty killing kind of off the start there and um, played that fourth line kind of grinder role with Helmer and Drapes and Maltz. And uh, we, it, it was good because we actually, they used us, you know what I mean? When, when there's a penalty, we'd hop right over. We knew that was our job. So um, it was kind of nice to have a, a defined role. And, um, but I mean, it was, it was just great every day in practice. I, I just felt like I was getting so much better. It didn't, you know, it wasn't just go get a sweat and touch the puck. It was like, okay, what do I get to learn today? And then you had, you know, Tommy Holmstrom in front of the net tipping pucks mm -hmm. after every practice. So I'm like, Tommy, what talk to me here? And then, you know what I mean? And he would just explain. And the funniest thing is like, if you look, you watch him get dressed and he's got like no protection on the front of his, like he had, he had suspenders with like two cups on there and a string. And then you look at the backside of braces and shoulder braces though. <laughs> yeah. It was all braces. Yeah. Yeah. All braces. But Oh, and then you look at the back of him, and he's just like plated, like bulletproof. Right. And he, he, we're like, Tommy, like, the pucks are coming at you. And he goes, but I trust you guys. I don't trust the guys behind me. And I was like, okay, start right there. So just little things like that. You, you just talk to players, pick their minds. I mean, you just watch how drapes goes about his day professionally on, on his, on his fitness and conditioning and how he prepares himself for every game. I mean, you could go down the lineup and, and see how every guy does it and learn something. So um, I, I played uh, almost five years there and I, I, Loved every second of it. I thought the Illiches were just unbelievable owners, and um, it trickled right down to you know the guys in the room. Um, so yeah, it was it was really fun. We we didn't have the success Aaron had there, but we had some good runs, um, and and we had some wonderful teams and 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 good people in the locker room. So overall, it was a great experience. I love living in Detroit. We raised my kids, or two of the two of my three were born there, so. It, it holds a special place in our heart and our family still. Hey, Patty, correct me if I'm wrong. Your drink of choice is the Rattler, right? It's your European influence? Yes. That, yeah, Germany we did talk lockout. about that. Yeah, you're in Germany in the lockout in 05. Is when you started rhyming off what he was drinking, I'm like, oh, that's a Rattler. That's like a Pils <laughs> Pilsen, a Sprite, or Pilsen, a ginger ale. That's, yeah. yeah. We, I, yeah, I stayed away from that. I went and found I went on found the old Scottish lady that ran the local pub in uh, in Ingolstadt, Germany, and she taught me about whiskey. I got smart. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, you know what, Mike? If I may, I I was going to ask you, Aaron, about that, and I know Eric played actually in Berlin with with my buddy. He was his line mate, Mark Pofay. But you made the school. decision a little bit before your time, Patrick. But you made the decision like Eric to go over to the DEL. What was that like during the lockout 
which is so, so stupid. We could talk about that whole routine for the next 15 hours, but we'll skip it. What was that experience like going to the DEA? Irony of all ironies. So uh, on TV, I think it was today or yesterday, they had the Champions League game between a team from Geneva, and I think it was a Finnish team. Mm -hmm. I'll say this. Every NHL player should have the privilege of going to play one year in Europe Mm -hmm. because you never experience a level of passion that you can't get that in North America. So I went over and I went and played Ingolstadt and I knew nothing about what I was coming up on. So I land in Munich. I take a 45 minute ride up the Autobahn to Ingolstadt. It's the headquarters of, of Audi. And when I get there, everything's top notch. I mean, the facilities are nowhere near the size of what the national hockey league is, but it's all there. Yeah. But the experience I'm, I'm a guy at that point, 2005. So I'd probably be in the league t- 10, 12 years. So yeah, 10, 12 years. I was the first guy at the rink for every single game after my first one because I wanted to come watch the fans. They lined up at two o'clock in the afternoon. They sat there and they sang and they got drunk and they had fun. And I was getting the German guys to interpret, like, what's that song about? And they're horrific songs. Like, they made up songs about guys in the other team and the coaching staff with words that, I mean, even though it's not bleeped out here, I can't say them. And the song, they all... So by time game time is coming around, the flags are going and the chanting's going and people are drunk and you can feel it. And I got there, there they have something called the Pokal, which is essentially the country's championship. Mm -hmm. We won the Pokal. They declared a three-day holiday. And as a guy who was in college and I thought I could handle it, I tapped out after day one. Those Germans could drink. (laughs) And and. By day three, we're drinking out of a giant stein in the city hall above the whole town. Like, I've never been cheered to drink, but they were cheering me to drink booze. <laughs> it was the most amazing experience. And when I left, it, there was a part of me that realized, like, I've missed out on something. Like, I played in the Spangler Cup early in my career, mm-hmm. but I didn't play for the hometown. Playing for the hometown was something completely different you're not ready for. And I'm glad and appreciate the fact that I got this opportunity. It wasn't rinky-dink because the DEL is high-quality hockey, just played on a bigger ice surface, and you have some incredibly talented guys that made me, an NHLer, look pretty stupid sometimes. That's awesome. (laughs) You know, when I was listening to you guys talk about your time with the Red Wings, it made me realize how spoiled we were with that locker room you had. And I think some of us don't even realize how great some of those teams were. Outside of that, who were the best? Who was the best player you guys played against? Uh, I'd have to say Nick Lidstrom. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I remember getting a one-on-one against him early in my career, and his stick was like three inches from the puck the whole time. I felt like it was in handcuffs going down the ice, and then all of a sudden he somehow got it and transitioned it before I even knew what happened. Like his, he was just always in the right spot at the right time. His positioning, and but he was always. He was playing chess the, yeah. the whole time out there, and I would I would say him or, or Datsuk, they were um, they just kind of made you nervous out there. Where you, especially when Pav was like back checking you or something, you could just feel him back there, and you're like, okay, when is he going to take it? It wasn't if like if he was or not. So I, I would say those two are probably um, they they stick out in my mind uh, as as two just elite players. So my guy actually played in the West the most of his career against me. And then I became his teammate at the end of my career. It was Tamu Solani. And I don't know what it was about him, but he gave me fits because <laughs> there's, there's nothing about him that's predictable. Not even his personality. Like I've never seen a guy have more fun in life doing whatever he could. He'd be going to the bathroom. He'd be going, he could be playing golf. <laughs> he could be playing hockey. He could be telling you about his cars. Like, he is having a riot doing it all. <laughs> like, you played with him, Patty, right? You're right. I, I just missed him, but I I, had, I saw him out in Anaheim. And, yeah, he is just a special human being. He just, like you said, just a, a, always about having his, fun. About his game on the ice, it, you, it like, some guys over the course of time, and this is part of your maturation as a defenseman, is – you you, be, you benefit from repetition against guys because you know you you assemble if you're smart enough to to assemble a rolodex on what guys do to you inside out move guy makes a move and always has a stick in the air because he never wants to chop it like Fedorov the one thing I knew is he would put the puck under you and you'd never get a you never get uh, any access to his stick 
he would shield his stick and then put it down the right time and, and beat you. Solani, he was as aggressive as he was fast. So he might go around you or he might try and run through you. And he didn't look that big, but man, he was just a ball of muscle. And he had this like rocket shot that didn't take a big wind up. Um, and he talked to you. Um, and you know, I mean, his English and Finnish sounded the same, exactly the same. I don't know the language he was talking, but he sounded angry sometimes. So we get your attention. You're looking around like, what's going on? So he, for me, was the guy that that probably gave me the most fits. I mean, there were some guys that that would would burn you because they're naturally skilled. He had so many facets to his game that it was hard to predict him. Uh, great, great stuff. Uh, by the way, Aaron, I'd be remiss. I think about five guys mentioned the old bit from the fan. Whatever he hits, he destroys. So just know yeah. that you're you still live in infamy for that, Patrick. A little bit before your time, uh, the old morning show on the fan used to play the clip from Rocky Four, that uh, was where a, they're talking what about Drago. From? Whatever he hits, he destroys, and they tied that to Aaron that. Ward. Yeah, Greg Henson, right, Aaron? Greg yeah, Henson. Yeah, but do you remember what event precipitated? Like what created that that moment? What was the moment? What was the exact moment? What was so, moment A? We went in, this is after, this is my first year. We go into, is it Appleton Arena or whatever the, whatever arena in Colorado is. And it's probably, the, it's the first game of the season. And we are in the second period and Rene Corbet is going down the ice and I knock him out cold. So he, I collide with him along the boards and I throw a shoulder and a hip into him and he comes out bloody. And it was the first time, like, that's the area where you get your ass kicked. Like I was yeah. prepped, I was prepped for, I think Reichel was there at that time. I had they had an array of guys. I was like, I'm fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing happened because there's Corbet lying on the ground lifeless. So there was a tone set there. And then like five shifts later, Marty LaPointe goes out and makes Gusaroff swallow his tongue with a hit. And they have to uh, administer like medical aid on the ice. So there was like, a, there was a feel. So for guys that maybe weren't as connected to the rivalry, because I wasn't there the, the year before in that arena where, where Drapes got hit, mm -hmm. there was an immediate like, oh, this is going to carry on. And then, you know, I took the infamous drive in with Drapes and McCarty before the Lemieux uh, turtle incident, and they didn't even tip off that something was happening. But that drop <laughs> was Henson and um, and Jamie Samuelson, RIP. Yep. yep. Um, and it's funny that it's still like I'll go to Michigan football games. I'll be walking and like I don't look anything like I used to, but I hear someone walk by and then all of a sudden like yell it out loud, and then people connect with it. They know what the hell it's about. I, it's yeah. just kind of surprising sometimes. But that was that was a fun look. It pissed Scotty off though. Of oh my it god, did. it pissed Scotty off. Of course it did. <laughs> the fact, yeah. So the fact that I was some punk twenty four year old that was getting interviewed and willing to talk on radio. So at that time, John Hahn, who was a PR guy, was like, hey, it's yeah, good. You know, have some personality. We'll have you on radio. Come to find out, Scotty hated it. Just absolutely hated it every minute of it. I mean, Henson was, was a hard guy to like if you didn't know him from a, on, on radio. Jamie was nice, but Jamie took some stances. So Scotty, uh, yeah, that was, that, was, that was worn like a tattoo on my ass with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I can't thank you guys enough. We're, we're going to let you go in a second. You can see these two guys in, in plenty of, of former players. April 27th at Big Boy Arena. It's all for charity. Uh, make sure you get out there. It, it is such a great show. I, I mean it in all sincerity. I had the privilege of calling the first one, and it, it's going to be fun to do this next one. I, I want to ask you guys one more thing. And, and, and again, remember, this is all about charity. So it's cool these guys are doing this and, and giving back as well. Along the lines of what Mike's saying, and Patrick, we'll start with you. Who's the toughest goalie you faced? Who was the guy that just you couldn't figure him out in any way, shape, or form? Oh shoot! There, there were so many good goalies. Uh, it's kind of funny because nowadays there aren't. They don't have the high <laughs> quality, you're right. high you're quantity, right. high quality yes. guys. I mean, the fact that Jacob Markstrom is the most sought after goalie right now on the on the goalie market's nuts. But in our era, like every night, oh, you got to play Hossie? Oh, you got to play Curtis Joseph? Oh, you got to go pay Patrick Roy? Like, it's a, it's like a thorny fist in the ass every time you're trying to go down the ice and score these guys. Oh, yeah. That's a that's such a great point. Yeah. They, a flurry was always, Flower was always hard to, he was so athletic. And um, yeah, he gave me fits. I didn't get many goals against him. He was, 
He was in, he was prime and he was he was hard to beat with a shot. You had to make a good shot to beat him. So I would say Flurry uh, back in the day was he had my number. Aaron, was there a guy that stuck out to you? I I, I know that, that you weren't. The uh, I didn't really guy. score much, so they all kind of sucked. <laughs> yeah. for me. I want to compliment them all. Like man, especially my goalies. Like you're talking about ruining confidence. Once they figured out that I only had two moves on my own team, I never scored in practice the rest of the season. <laughs> I went five hole or low blocker, and once they knew that was out of play, I, I had nowhere else to go. <laughs> hey, hey, we are really looking forward to seeing you guys. I appreciate the time here tonight. Uh, I, I, I can't wait. So many people in the chat are saying thanks for the great memories, and, and certainly we can make some more and see these guys April 27th. And, and don't forget, I want everybody out there to know these guys are having fun, but it's all about these charities and helping out some great causes. So, uh, Aaron, continued success to you. Patrick, greatest beard in the league as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> really appreciate you guys taking the time tonight. Thank you. All right, we have to Thank fix the hat for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Aaron Ward and Patrick Eves kindly joining us here on, on the show. That was a heck of a lot what of fun. What a couple Mike. of beauties. Aren't that, they great? That, that was excellent. I mean, we say it all the time. I, I can sit and talk hockey with guys like that. And oh, my just listen gosh. Listen to their stories. Oh, my gosh. Talking about drinking beer and singing in Germany. It, it could have been one of the best stories we've heard. You know, the funny thing is, too, um, you know, this is this is before I worked for the fan. When I, when I heard them doing that, whatever he hits, he destroys stuff. And I thought that was, like, so cool. And then getting a chance to know some of those guys. I didn't get a chance to know Ward all that well. It was later in his career that I kind of got a chance to get to know him, but getting a chance to know some of those guys, you're absolutely right. Mike, you sit back and you're like, wow, you know, those rosters. And I know everybody talks about 2002 and rightfully so, but even 97 and 98, look at the people on those rosters. It was disgusting. It was ridiculous. And and, and it doesn't hit you as a fan. And no. then we're sitting here listening to him say it. And I've got a question lined up about who's the best that they played against. And they're just naming these guys in the locker room that they played with. And I mean, I can't even imagine. It would have been unbelievable. Uh, we got to take care of some business. Uh, speaking of hockey, a uh, big weekend uh, out in Frazier. Uh, not only will it be a, a big weekend on April 27th, but this coming weekend, the Motor City Rockers, we had a chance to talk to their head coach, Gordy Brown, last night. This week, the Rockers take on the Columbus River Dragons. Three-game weekend set after sweeping the Prowlers last weekend. The Rockers uh, continue their win streak against one of the best teams in the league. Friday night, $2 beer night, 735 presented by Labatt Blue. During the game, there will be selected areas for you to purchase beer for only two bucks. WCSX own radio talent, Ryan Logan, will also be taking shifts during the game. You certainly don't want to miss that. I saw him light up a goal in practice yeah. today. Yeah, it's oh. on Twitter, as a matter of fact. Right. Saturday is Faith and Family Night. You and your group can get four tickets for only four bucks. Best prices in town for some good old school hockey. The first 400 people that enter the game will get a unique purple rockers wristband that says Motor City Rockers on one side and on the other side, Faith and Family Night. That game is at 6.05. And it's a trio of games. How about this? Sunday, 205, Sunday, fun day. Uh, the promo for the day is two tickets and a bucket of beer for only 40 bucks. That is the best way to not just celebrate the week you would finish, but it's the best way to watch a hockey game on a Sunday afternoon. For all ticket information, you can go to rockershockey.com or you can contact Connor Chikaki by phone or email for any groups, suites, or tables you would like for the night. The number to call is 313-944-0625, or you can reach him through email at connor at rockershockey.com. Really can't thank them enough. How about Mark said, shout out to Mahan. Boy, that's a great memory. There's another old DFN bit. I'm gonna to have to tell you about my hand. That's okay. a that's a that's a, a great Usually bit. Usually when you elbow me like that, it's gonna be a good one. Yeah, that's it's a that's a good, a good bit. Ben said, please come by and say hello. Ben hi. calls the game sir. He's a mutual friend of ours. Say hi to Ben, please. Hi, Ben. And and I can't wait to get down there talking about hockey and beer. Sounds like it's gonna be a good time. And I'm hearing that uh we may have to sneak down there. Yeah, we're gonna we're I'm I'm trying to work something out with Gordy where you and I can get out there one night. We're kind of busy the next couple of weeks. We have this little high yes. school hockey thing going on, but 
which, which makes me, I was missing Eric Cole on this one here that uh, he actually played for his public high school. Yes, absolutely. 49 yep. goals in 40 games. I had it all written up here with my with my stats. I know I got called stat guy the other day, but uh, I got some stats I want to talk I know. It's a, usually I'm the nerd with all that stuff that's up in my head. Mike, Nick said you can talk about your shirt now. Boom. I was going to say. I've Nick and Mike, you Nick. guys would get along wonderfully. He, he's been firing off. Nick, I am going to be in Indianapolis on August 26th, and I just scored tickets to Vegas, so I'm going to be real close to the stage there. Uh, Thursday, May 16th. So uh, maybe I'll see you at a show. Yeah. You know, Mike, it's, it's interesting again, April 27th. That is the date of the game. Um, can't thank Joe Neville enough for putting us in touch. Sorry. We couldn't catch up with Eric Cole. Maybe we'll do it some other time. It's interesting. Uh, Aaron knew who Mark was, you know, they, they both played college hockey at the same time and um, played in Germany at the same time, you know, our mutual friend that played over there in Germany and Mark had the same feeling about the DEL uh, that Aaron did. He had a blast there. Absolutely loved it. Um, I, I hear nothing but good things about the experience for a lot of guys that maybe had a little time in the NHL or some of those guys in the lockout, if you remember, yeah. that made the decision over there to 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 keep the legs fresh, so to speak. Well, absolutely. They, they had to do something, and it's good hockey. I mean, even uh, since he had a late birth here, Austin Matthews had to take that one extra year. He went overseas, and he played in Europe, too. Yep. No doubt about it. Um, Hey, listen, very quickly, I got. I want to make sure I take care of the business because, again, uh, the people that are helping us with this, I hope that you help them with their business. Uh, the people that are promoting us, please, please, please support them. Uh, one of them is Broadwell Homes. And when it comes time to get yourself a new house, whether you're buying, selling, both, whatever the case may be, you need to contact the agent that I recommend in that is Lindsay Broadwell. Your house is probably the biggest investment you'll ever make. And that's why you need a pro. That's exactly what Lindsay is. She grew up here on the mean streets of Northville and has expanded her team all over Southeast Michigan. She's an expert in all facets of business. When it's time to move, our friend Lindsay and her team will make sure you get the most out of your house and everything goes smoothly when you're finding your new home. Buyers, sellers, first-time buyers, doesn't matter. Make sure you contact Lindsay at broadwellhomes.com. She will help you with everything from start to close. Licensed realtor at Real Broker LLC. Start your search today at broadwellhomes.com. I have purposely not talked to the Red Wing, talked about the Red Wings with you, Mike. Okay. Mike and I talk a lot during the course of the week. And I, I haven't talked to him about the Red Wings because I wanted to save this for him um, when we do the show. Most of our conversations are about smoked meat or right now high school hockey. We mix in some Hab stuff too because I don't I don't bore you guys with the Hab stuff. Um, has your opinion changed at all on this team the last couple of weeks? I think this February was big for this team. I really do. Yes, and getting the points that uh, are always tough to come by on the West Coast trip. But, Sean, my opinion has to totally changed. I, I don't want to, but I like this team. I, I am falling. I am falling for this team. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you what Sometimes it, is. it happens. It happens. I'm going to tell you what it is. Yeah. I watch and I watch and I wait for them to crack. I wait for them to look lost. I, I look, wait for them to panic. They are calm and in control. And that's that veteran presence that they have on that team. They they need a little more scoring, right? But they 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 have it. They're good. I I'm falling for this team. You're not all in though, Jeremiah. I know what you're doing there. It's not the Armani <laughs> push into the chips. Okay, we're not doing that. No, but no, 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 I, no, I, no, no, I would say you and I are on the same page then because I told you, um. I thought that this was a playoff team. I'm going to say again, I don't think it matters. I know everybody yes. wants them. You'd rather see them in the playoff than not see them in the playoff. Wonderful, fine, that's great. Um, I, I feel better about it. I look at this string of games, okay, starting with the game that, that started February, the game against Vancouver, and then the West Coast trip, which ask any guy, it's brutal. It seems like you're gone forever. It doesn't matter if you play a crappy team or a good team. It's just the grind. And now coming back with this game against Colorado, uh, I I really like, I really, you know what, Blake, you can go to hell. You can go straight to hell. You've been chirping at me the whole damn show. So you can go. So look at, I'm wearing this. No, 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 no
Listen, I'm wearing this right now because they, you know, it's 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 my buddy, the Pastor Foundation, and this was their first game. There's the Red Wings logo, and there's that evil logo on my right arm. So I have a bunch of old friends that are going to chirp at me. Okay. You're an ass, but listen, <laughs> listen, no, Mike knows this. I don't, did I ever tell you this? So my first dog was named Chelios. You, you knew that, right? Did, did I ever tell you what I taught him to do um, when he heard the word Bruins? Did I ever tell you that? Mike witnessed this. He would bark and growl at people. All I had to do was say Bruins. True 100%, story. 100%. True story. 100%. That I, well, because he was mocking me. I mean, let's 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 just get that out of the way and, right now. And his confidence is growing and growing, and he takes a shot at the Bruin patch. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Thanks. You're a jerk. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna. I'm, can I? Wait, can I get a refund on that money I sent you, Blake? That's what I. Is there any way I can pull that back? Damn it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like Kristen's even saying true story. Yeah, true story. You say I would say Bruins and he would bark and growl. The true story. Uh, Tammy said my husband barks and growls when I cheer on Marshawn. That's, on that's great. I give her credit. For uh, that. Nezzy uh, was asking me earlier on Twitter about some potential trades and, and if you think Steve is going to be busy. I'm of the opinion here's the thing if somebody tells you, that they know what Steve is going to do, they're lying. Let me just get that out of the way right now. I, if, if there's never been a guy that keeps things as close to the vest as Steve Eiserman does. So what you try to do, it's almost like uh, that the Manhunter movie. You have to think like Hannibal Lecter, right? You have to think like, yep. uh, like, like the bad dude and everything. In this case, a very good dude. I don't think that the Red Wings make a move unless something magical and unbelievable presents itself. Does that make sense? Yes. And I don't see that happening from what the, no. the price is on some of these players. I, I think they're going to, they're going to lose some of their, uh, a couple of youth guys that, that they don't really have a future for. And they're, they're going to get again, these assets, right? Yep. I mean, obviously I think everyone's dream back on to, to me falling for this uh, team, them dangling, Patrick Kane out there for me. I, I he has been incredible since since he's come back from his injury. I just need someone to play with him. You like him, don't you? Oh my god, you've come around, haven't I you? I have. Look, look, the deal still makes no Call sense the dogs to off, me Kaner. right now. Makes no sense to me still right now. But watching him, oh, so the passes he's been making it is, I'm, I'm, I'm it, I'm it. I'm not all the way in. I'm, I'm, but I'm there. I, I'm, I am digging this team. Uh, Tammy said it. It would have to be a big defenseman if he does anything. They need a couple of defensemen. Yes. They yes. really, truly do. Mo um, needs some help. Big they time. Need some help. Big time. They're, no they're doubt. hanging him out the drive big time. Uh, more NHL talk in a second. I want to talk to you about our friends at Legacy. Uh, big hockey fans. Uh, I've been chirping with uh, uh, Dave Peacock, as a matter of fact, was the guy that said, if you use the move in a game, you deserve to get punched. Right. Uh, that's one of our friends at Legacy Partners, uh, Joe and Alex and Dave. Appreciate everything that they do. And did you know they do for thousands of Metro Detroiters? And they keep getting it done. So give them a call at Legacy Partners to get help with your home and auto insurance. Our friends at Legacy Partners are one of Southeast Michigan's top independent insurance agents and provide a full service, one-stop solution for all of your insurance needs, personal and business, large and small. Legacy has helped our listeners by fixing mistakes other agents have made, asking the right questions to get the right coverage put in place to properly protect you and, oh, by the way, save you money. Chances are, if you haven't checked your policies in the last year, you're probably paying too much and you could be underinsured. Enter our friends at Legacy Partners. Give them a call and a chance to help with your home, your cars, life insurance, Medicare enrollment, or your business insurance needs. You ready? Here's a number. You see it on the screen? I'm going to say it anyway. 586-209-4106. 586-209-4106. Or visit Legacy partnersins.com to get started with your quote. Adam brought up a great point. Can you go back up? Where's 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 Adam's 
where was Adam's point? Uh, that New Jersey is starting to keep. They have been underachieving and under the radar all year. And, and this is the dangerous time where teams start to, I, I don't know, finally start to be themselves, you know, for whatever reason, meandering. I mean, remember the Florida Panthers last year. I mean, they simply put, they ran out of gas late, but New Jersey's a dangerous team. Like there's a lot of talent there. There is now they, they are struggling. Like a lot of people, they're struggling with goaltending. Mm-hmm. They need to find themselves a, con- a consistent goaltender. They're solid on, on the D if Hughes can stay healthy, he's back though. They've been struggling the last couple of games since he's been back, but they're also looking at bringing someone home. They're, they're looking at bringing Adam Henry home is a big rumor for them. I think that'll add a nice veteran presence in there. Um, someone that'll help that team out, but that it's, the, the Devils are a dangerous team. Adam said, "Big defenseman that can fight if needed. Wings are a bit soft, unfortunately." Let me let me say this to that. I actually had a conversation with you guys. Know Maz? Maz asked me why can't the Wings be one of those teams, you know, like Florida from last year that get into the playoff and make some noise. And and the answer is basically what you just said: sandpaper. They don't have that sandpaper yet. Florida had that sandpaper. And obviously, you know who is king sandpaper with that team. Make no mistake about it. And I think it got almost infectious with that team last year. You you and I watch a lot of the playoffs either. I I was having a blast watching Florida play. You know, Kachuk was obviously the ringleader, but there's, there's an element... Of, and, and when I say toughness, I'm not saying drop the gloves and, you know, let's go and stuff like that. I, I, I think just that that edge, that when the going gets tough, we're going to invoke our will on you. Oh, yeah. and what they do is they play playoff hockey every game. They they come out every game. I mean, and it's much – we were we were uh, tweeting back and forth about it. They're, they're must-watch hockey every time Florida plays. But what, what, what concerned me about that is – that catches you at some point. Yes. And, and as you've seen, what brought Florida down in the playoffs last year at the end was a couple of injuries. It that playing that style oh, is good. It's gonna wear you. They just ran out of gas, bit. absolutely. But 100 percent fun. And again, Blake, I've got a 23 to 1 ticket on Florida. I'm not gonna argue I'm, with I'm that. I'm not gonna argue with that one. Uh Kyle need to extend Patty Kane, praying Kane will stay one more year. Our friend Kirk Hunter. Did you say hi? Hey the coach, Kirk. Kirk Hunter. Hi, buddy. He was at high school hockey tonight. Right below that, Kyle. Yeah. New Jersey will catch Philly. I like Philly. Do you really? That is a fun. That's another team. Like, there's certain teams I want during the regular season. The regular season can get boring. I got to find teams like Florida, Ottawa when when they want to play me. Philly is a fast team. They, they, They play the game and it's exciting to watch. But again, they, they don't have a lot there. There's not a lot of depth there, and, and the goaltending is going to catch them. But I do like to watch Philly. Milky Waters chimed in. <laughs> Thanks, Milky. Appreciate that. Th- thank you very much for, for watching the show. Uh, any Anything else with hockey? I mean, you and I are – listen, you guys, I'm serious. Uh, no joke, Patrick Eves and I were talking about high school hockey yeah. today – in text and like he was like did pioneer win yes pioneer ended up winning so i I know he's happy about that now they have to face brighton you and i are going to that game on on saturday uh catholic central's run begins tomorrow night uh this is uh going to be a heck of a lot of fun around here really is it's going to be fun and that's going to be emotional Yes. It is his last run. I, yeah. I don't, I can't even get started on that. Next. Yes. Next topic. Next topic. Milky Waters <laughs> coming in as the guest draft analyst on off the year. You know, the Milky Water story, right? Yes. The made up. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, I was such an idiot. I'm still an idiot, but I was such an idiot back then. I, I really did some really dumb things. Um, maybe we can have Aaron Ward on again, and I can tell you a dumb thing that okay. I, there's a story, but that, that's I, I was I was waiting. There's a story. Yeah. There's a story. Yeah. But was every everything. Uh, um, anything else jump out to you? Uh, I miss. I like what Aaron said about goaltenders. Um, you know that was the thing for me. Not enough was said when the Habs made that crazy run a couple of years ago. I made the joke that Carey Price woke up one morning fell out of bed and banged his head and he woke up and he thought it was 2014 right. again. Like, honestly, I mean, all of a sudden he looked like, you know, the guy that was the best goaltender in the world in, in 2014. And that was a huge part of their run. We grew up in an era, 
sometimes, uh, Mike, where, where, as Eve said, every night there was a guy and, and you're just not seeing that right no, now. You, you're, you're just not, not seeing that. And, and the, the, the ones that have them are those, those that are on top. And, and what we just mentioned, we're mentioning a few teams. Our Detroit Red Wings are one of them that are our border teams. And every time I said, but they need goaltending, mm -hmm. but they need goaltending but they need goaltending over and over and over. And then, you know, Fleury's run his course. We've already talked about and that. And then you so, see Lyon playing the way he is. Like, honest, can you imagine where this team would be without him? I'm not even joking. Right. Now, You're do right. I think there's staying power there? I don't think he's right. the long-term answer or anything no. like that. No, but no, 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 no. honest to goodness, I'm serious. Where would this team be without Alex Lyon right now? His, his numbers are so far above, I think, what's, what's probably expected out of him. But, hey, that's great. Thank you very much. But, again, they, they're absolutely right. It, it's just not – the level of goaltending that we grew up with. No. Angry Doug Todd even joined the conversation. Boy, they're, they're, they're get all the bits out Just there. <laughs> Jeez, oh, Pete. All right, before we get out of here, I do want to tell you about my friends, uh, Mike and Jeff Husack. Um, they are not only great guys, uh, not only my neighbors, and I've had many parties with them, <clears throat> but – they're also my financial advisors. I'm telling you point blank, you should use them as well. If you're ready to take charge of your financial future, look no further than Wealth Advantage Group, located in a historic downtown Northville and owned by two brothers. Those guys right there. See them? That's Mike on the left. That's Jeff on the right. These guys understand that your financial goals are as unique as you are. That is why they offer personalized expert guidance to help you navigate the complexities of financial planning. Now, whether you're saving for retirement, getting ready to sell your company, or already in retirement, these two can help guide you through every step of your financial journey. They will work with clients throughout all stages of life and have clients in over 20 states. The investment world is complex, so if you're ready to start taking your finances more seriously, then it might be time to work with the experts, please call my friends at the Wealth Advantage Group at 248-773-8574 or visit their website at www.thewealthadv.com. Uh, without Lion, Mr. Eisenman would be in trouble. That's agreed. Adam, that's what Bobrowski did. He was washed up and he bumped his head. Absolutely. It was, it was shades. Now I know he, he had done that throughout his career, but it had been a while since he yeah. did that. You know what I mean? Uh, that's a good point. Todd said, did we already talk NHL 94? We did talk it last night, but Mike and I can talk, but we can, we can tell you definitively. All right. So I'll even take you before NHL 94, our mutual friend, Dave Mitchell. Are you guys familiar with his work? Dave Mitchell. Uh, played goal at Western Michigan. Uh, now, of course, coaches uh, Lavonia Stevenson. Mike and I, this is a true story. We would go over his house and steal his Sega from him because he always went to bed early. And Mike and I, we would play till five o'clock in the morning. That true story, as soon as I'm sitting here and people would go, well, were you guys drinking beers? Nope. nope. Eating. Eating. Eating and playing Sega. Eating. And then he'd go, I can't believe you got pizza sauce on my controller. And I'll do it again tomorrow, Mitchell. I will do it again tomorrow. But the, no, really, that that was. And then when NHL 94 came out, like we thought like the original NHL game was so cool. And NHL 93, when NHL 94 came out, it changed everything. It really did. What a magical, magical moment that was. It was great. Do you remember, uh, I think we'd go to Blockbuster at times, and we would rent Sega. Yes. We would rent Terminator and hockey, and then we, <laughs> we would come back. And again, we, we would play all night. All night. And, and my mom would come down and like, where did we get this? Blockbuster. You go yeah. to Blockbuster and just rent. We would rent it because we had to play. Do you remember the one time I remember my parents were out of town. I was like, I don't know, 21 or something. And, and you, me, and our mutual friend Q, we went to the arena and we ate wings. And then we came back and that guy burned wings. our mouths. And then, like, I'm not crapping you. Todd, this is a segment just for us three now since you asked. Then us three, me, you, and Q played at my house till like 5 o'clock in the morning. And it was funny because my mom was terrified that I was going to have a party. And she goes, did you have anybody over? I go, just, just Mike and Dave. And, and she was like, am I going to have to find beer bottles and stuff? No. Nope. Well, what did you guys do? We played Sega all night. 
That's how life changing it was. Yes, it, it was. I mean, Boy, were we I mean, nerds? Because I just started Oof. laughing when you mentioned the age twenty one. When everyone else is out at the bar, bar hopping. We did go to the bar though, so we we are kind of cool. We we just not a lot. Some of the hottest wings ever, and then came back and played <laughs> yes, Sega. Exactly. Or we would, we would go to the back alley at Little Caesars and fire slap shots at, at a kid who uh, was a football player, and and he'd stand there like this, and we just fire slap shots That's at what him. I was gonna say Dave Mitchell played goalie at Western, a real good uh, goalie yep. at this time, and then he was a goal scorer in the back alley. Imagine that! It's amazing how that works out. Listen, we got to get out of here. Uh, we went long tonight. I hope you guys don't mind. Thanks for checking us out. Uh, tell your friends about it. Um, we'd really appreciate it. Um, so next week. I hope I'm not jinxing it, but next week, I'm going to say it, okay? Say it. Chris Nyland. Knuckles Nyland. I'm, like, I'm ecstatic. I'm not I'm not going to lie to you. I I mean, Knuckles Nyland? Are you kidding me? You guys know me. You know who I root for. Um, Knuckles Nyland is tentatively scheduled to be on the show. Got a lot of stuff coming up. I did talk to a uh, certain coach in the National Hockey League that said he would come on. I did talk to a certain bad guy in the National Hockey League that said he would come on. And I have a secret for him that he doesn't even know about. I'm not going to tell you. No, there's nothing you can do to make me tell you. Uh, in the meantime, thanks to Blake. Thanks to Todd. Thanks to Patrick Eves. Thanks to Aaron Ward. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Uh, we'll see you next week on What the Puck. What the Puck. Featuring Sean Belegian, produced by Todd Losey and Blake Matrizek. Executive produced by Sean Belegian and Todd Losey. Theme song and incidental music by Elliot Middleton. Engineering, mixing, and graphic design support provided by the Unsyndicated Podcast team. Don't forget to like and subscribe to What the Puck on all your favorite channels. While you're there, be sure to rate and review the podcast. Got something to say to Sean? Call the Unsyndicated Hotline at 248-237-3257.